Hello everyone, and this is audio for video games via Unity part 3. This is going to be the C Sharp Basics. I'm going to go over basic Unity classes, functions, and variables, and just some of the things that you can do with them, which are kind of nifty. So, to begin, I uh, believe last time we, we left off having you guys bring an audio clip into Unity and being able to import it and get it to play with inside the Unity editor which is great. Um, we went over some of the settings, the, the things that you can do with them, but we really didn't get into how you could actually manipulate an audio source via your code. So I'm going to, we're actually going to step into some programming and show you some of the basics. And I'm just going to cover the basics this round, and in the next video I'm going to start implementing some of the basic things I teach you for um, for audio development specifically. So, I've, I've gone ahead and made a folder called scripts, and inside it I put in a C-sharp script called sample script. To make a C-sharp script, once again, you just right-click, create, C-sharp script, and then you can just give it a name for the script. Another sample script is a good name for that, for example. Now when you first make one and you double click it and load it up, it will immediately give you something that will look like this. It will take the name that you put in and stick it right here. Um, it's going to match the name of the class that you named it. And it will also have these things up here that say like using Unity Engine, using system.collections. And it will say the sample script um, with a colon, mono behavior next to it, and it says it's a public class. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and break this down just bit by bit for you so it just doesn't come across confusing uh, as best I possibly can. So, these two lines right here are, they say using Unity Engine, using System.Collections. There is a bunch of different utilities, like just basically a bunch of other classes that Unity created, similar to the class that we're going to be making, that Unity made a whole bunch of them. And those ones we want to be able to take advantage of. One of those, for example, is Mono Behavior, which is, which is immediately used within your script. Unity Engine provides your scripting environment the ability to see and use that Mono Behavior class. So that's why this using Unity Engine is up here. It just gives you access to all the stuff that it's created. Then the second one is just a generic C Sharp system library, just called system.collections. Provides a bunch of useful utilities. We may also add one or two other ones of these while we're doing our scripting later, but for now, this will suffice for what we need. Now, I'm just going to go over a little bit of the theory of what a class, a variable, and a function is before I really show you how to put it into the code, how to write it per se, and the syntax that it would need for C-sharp in order to make it work. Classes are essentially a blueprint for how an object is going to work. Now with Unity, um, classes usually in, um, get this inheritance from mono behavior, which gives it some special abilities, and I'll explain that more in a minute. But a class is composed of functions and variables is what it comes down to. A class contains functions and variables. Now what is a function? What is a variable? Well, a variable is very similar to that of an attribute, something that describes something else, like skin color or, you know, uh, number of eyes. If you were making some type of monster that had five eyes, you'd want to be able to assign it the ability to have five eyes, for example. So that's what a, a variable, a variable holds these attributes. Um, variables can also be used for more advanced attributes, like a variable can be a variable of a class as well. But we'll, we'll tackle that more in a minute. A function is the ability to do something. It's an action. Think of it much like a, an action of some sort, like punch someone in the face function or take damage function. 
it's very much the doing of of scripting. So to make when you first load this up, it actually comes pre-built in with two functions. It says void start and void update. So those are two functions. But before I tackle the functions, I'm going to go ahead and tackle the variables. Now there's going to be some basic data types that you work with. That will be like a public, that's called int for integer, and that's an, an integer just represents a number. It could be 3, 5, 7, whatever. But you might be using that in reference to something else. For example, like number of coins. So you give a you give your variable, which is the type integer, and you assign that to an arbitrary name that you created on the spot. It can be whatever you want. Now Typical practice for syntax for C Sharp is that when you make a variable, it starts out lowercase. Notice I made it lowercase here. And every word that follows it, you easily do camel case, making this with like a capitalize and this a capitalize. Or what other people will do, will do an underscore of and an underscore coins, which also works. I opt to do more of the uh, number of coins approach camel case. I think it's nicer and easier to read. So that's why I do it. And less typing. That's a big one. So then you can immediately set it to a value that matches the type that it's asking for. So three. There we go. Now if I save, control S to save the script, and the dot will turn into an X. And if you go out of mono develop and back into Unity, you'll notice that it'll update over here as well, letting you know the changes that you've made to script. Now, because of Unity Magic, specifically this part of the Unity Magic here, the mono behavior part, you're able to take the script and put it onto an op on any of the objects in the scene as a component. Just like how we had the camera component and the audio listener component, your sample script is now also a component. So you just drag and drop it from here over, like I just did, and that'll bring the script into the scene. Notice how it has the number of coins variable here. And what's great about Unity is right here, I can actually modify that number of coins. I could go in manually type 156, which is great. Now this is just one of many different variables. Here's a couple of the other basic data types too. Say we have my name. Now my name is a string, which is a string type variable. Um, that type represents a series of characters. Now to, to make a series of characters you have to start with a double quote and end with a double quote. Now if you control save again, you go back out, you're going to notice that you now have a my name sector. Once again, you can change the name right here. Now, notice that I always put the word public in front of the declarations for each of these variables. The By default, C Sharp will make things private, um, which means only within inside the bounds of its class can it be seen. If I make another integer right now that's like int cheese, and set it equal to 2, I could still see cheese within the rest of my script, but outside in the editor, you won't be able to see script. Now, if you really want to be able to see it, but you still won't be able to modify it. You can actually right click up here in the top right hand corner and go to debug mode and it will show you your cheese value grayed out and unmodifiable. However, I like to leave things in normal mode because this mode just looks like there's a lot of extra stuff, you know what I mean? So there you go. 
Usually, I just list them as public so that you can see what they're doing. But if you want to hide them, feel free to hide some of your variables by making them not public. Now, a function can take advantage and use these variables, put them to some practical use of some sort. Unity has a special built-in functions, and I'll, I'll tackle some of these more in just a little bit. But this one is put together like this. called void on enable. It has to be typed exactly like this. The, the O has to be cap, the E has to be cap. You need to have void in front of it. You can still put public if you'd like, but that's optional, this particular function. Now, now for testing we do a lot of debugging. Debugging is just trying to find what bug you have and fix it. So Unity built some tools that allow you to just help you with finding out problems with your stuff and fix it. To do that, they um, made a debugging class. And it has a special function called log. So if you just go capital D bug dot log, you can then log some information in here. You can give, you can give it a string debug tests, and then you can also add to the end of that one of your uh, one of your variables like cheese. What will happen is if you save and you come back out here and now we click play, you will see that it debugged the test too. Now it does that because when you first load up the build it's going to enable the script, making it go off, making it go off. If I left this unchecked, this will leave it in a disabled state. And that debug.log won't show up. <laughs> but if I have it in play mode and then I click this checkbox while in play mode, you're going to have the debug.log go off every time you click the button. Which is nice. That's just that's just what this on enable function does. It's a special function that only works because you're using the mono behavior um, Unity magic that's added right here, which I'll explain this a little further in a little bit. I'll also explain how this works a little further in a little bit. But for now, we're just going to consider them just a little bit of magic and we'll tackle it further later. Now, I have a number of coins and a cheese value. Now, the point of a function is to do something. As you may notice, on enable does stuff when it's enabled. Now, you can make another function as well. To make a function, you need a couple things. Um, you can declare whether it's public or private. By default, it'll be private. Then you need to give it a return type, which means what this function is going to bring back when you're done. Now, if you put void in for the return type, it won't return anything. Now, this on enables a special function and can only return void. If you try to make it return something else, it'll throw you an error. But we're going to have one that's going to return a value. So, Let's just put integer for a return value. And we're going to call the function add, because what I'm going to do is I'm, this function is going to have the ability to add two numbers together. Now, in order to, for it to add two numbers together, you'd need two numbers for it to add. So right here you can make requests for what this function needs in order to run. So you can say, you know, value 1, and then a comma to say you want another variable, and then you can go int value 2. Now on a void function, you don't have to, but you can type in the word return. Return ends a function that you're working on. That just makes it end. Um, but 
but it's optional. You don't have to put it enable because if it's void, it will automatically hit here and do the return for you. So you don't have to return. But if you're if you're going to return something else like a number, like an integer, then you have to say, I'm going to be you have to have a return. Otherwise you get an error like this. Your sample scripts add function doesn't have a return value for integers. This is basically what it's saying. Because you said you're going to give it an integer back and you didn't. Now if you just go return zero, now it's returning something, the error goes away. But this isn't going to give us truly what add what we want add to do. What we want add to do is take the value of one and add that to the value of two. Now what I can do as you notice we were able to put an integer here and I was able to display it to the screen. Since this function returns as an integer, we could actually replace cheese with ab and and it would return an integer because this would return back an integer. But you can't call add because well how I currently wrote it, you can't you can't have it work because you need to give it two values to work with. So I could give it one comma two. And then the one is an integer, which would go here. The two is a number that would go here. Then it would take one and and add it to two and give you that value and return it. So this debug.test right here, when we click play, will give us a value of three. Now, since these are also numbers, like since they match in the type that's being requested, you can then give it what it requests instead of putting in just a number. So now it will add the number of coins in the cheese. Our number of coins right now is 156 and our cheese is 2. So when I click play and I enable my script, you're going to get 158. Makes sense. What's also great about this is I could change this to 2 and 2 and add it and tell it to add it together and you'll get 4. Okay. So So you can also make your own functions that return void as well. So you could have public void print. You could give it no parameters even. You don't have to give it a parameter like these like these are considered parameters. It's the requested things that they want. Now you can also ask for different kinds of parameters too, like string something or string uh, log. And then we could go debug dot log the log, and then it will give then it will print to the screen whatever string you feed print. So now instead of doing this function right here, we could just go print. And it will end up doing the exact same thing because this is a string once it's all converted. Because this add will convert the integer into a string value that will then be added onto the end of the string that's right here. And it will log it to the screen for you. Now, there's a couple other data types too that are good to know about. So, I'm going to hit a couple of them real quick. There's a boolean, which is a yes or no variable. So I'm just giving it some random name here again, just like I did with cheese, my name, and the number of coins. So the setup's quite similar each time. You have like your visibility, basically, so public or private. And then it's type, which is like integers or strings, or in this case, boolean. A name that you give it and then you can set it to a value. So this bool is yes or no, 
which you can set to true, which would mean yes, or false, which would mean no. Okay, so I hit variables and I hit functions pretty good here. I didn't really hit classes all that much as of yet. But since a class is a collection of variables and functions, in a way I've already hit the fact that that this is a that you know that kind of covering a class by covering functions okay. and variables because that's what a class is. The class is a collection of them. Okay. So, since a boolean is yes or no, and I set it to false, outside in the editor, you can change this to yes or no, which is a true or false. True, false. Which is very similar to what you see with the other scripts in the Unity editor, like our audio source, which you are familiar with, has a whole bunch of booleans that it uses which is pretty cool. Okay. So there's only one, well, in a way there's an infinite different numbers of data types that can be created. That's what's so great about classes, is each class is basically the ability to be a new data type. So if you want to create an instance of a class, it's about the same way that you do any of these other variables. You just say public name of the class, put a name for that class, and there we go. Now, what's interesting about this is it is a data type, just like integer, string, int, and bool is, but this data type's a little special because it contains all of these values that we've created right here. So your SS could have number of coins. And this number of coins could be different than could be different than the other than your actual number of coins because it could be assigned to a different script. I'll show you. Oh. Oh yeah, I forgot something important. Each one of these lines is essentially a statement of something that you're doing. They end with a semicolon. And if you don't have a semicolon on the end, it's going to throw an error like that. Just, just a fair warning for you. Also, if you don't save your script, any, it won't actually recompile the script, and your stuff over here won't change as well. So that's another good heads up to know. So say you've, you know, you now have this sample script thing. We could actually say, since we want, right now this is a, there isn't a sample script for this variable. But it needs to be, a, it can be assigned to nothing. But we could assign it itself by doing that. And now it's the main camera's sample script is assigned SS. Which would mean, in here in code, if we go in SS dot number of coins, that's going to be the same value as if we just go number of coins because this value because this is the same value as our actual script. But that's only because these are of the same class. I mean, we could use all the other Unity classes. You can use quite a few of the other Unity classes as a variable here and that would also work. But I think I'll hit I think that's going a little bit ahead of ourselves, maybe. And probably is a little bit of enough for this particular video. Um, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to go ahead and... Well, there's actually one more type of data thing that I'd like to show you. And this is a pretty cool one.
So I'm going to hit that real fast. Then I'm going to have you play around with making some functions, just and debugging some values to the screen, and that should be that should be good. But this last one's kind of cool. So you go public, integer, and you have these two brackets, and then let's call it bunch of ints. Now what's cool about a bunch of ints is a bunch of ints can be any number of integer values. You could have five integer values in here. This will be useful for us in the future. When we want to randomize audio clips, for example, we could have each one of these elements in this array be an audio clip. But we'll we'll hit that harder later. Um, but yeah, it's an ar array. Array can be applied to any type of data type. Int, string, boolean, your custom class, like we were doing earlier. Uh, whatever, really. Whatever data type you want. And you can actually have multiple instances. And then you can get to certain instances by just putting a bunch of ints and the number in the array that you want to access. So a bunch of ints 0 would be this element 0 right here, which is currently set to 33. So now this debug this debug.log, when we click, when we enable the script, will be 33. So with that, go ahead and try making a couple functions. Um, use on enable to, and debug.log to log some values to test to your console. And I just want you to make several different just variables, give them some test names, and just, just play with it a little bit. Try making a function that can return something that you could use somewhere else, like I did with add earlier. And then try, um, you know, using the debug.log to make stuff print to the console. And make sure you try, you know, bringing the script actually onto an object in the scene and try playing with it and see what it does. So this is this is kind of a, a big dive into this, and once this once we get over the syntax stuff of coding, um, then we can tackle more of how we can apply it specifically to the audio creation and manipulation. And that will be covered in the next video. Thanks so much, you guys.